Like, folks, how's it all going? Welcome back in Old Man Hill. Posing for a family picture here. Oh, man. In the land of grills, folks. <laughs> I tell you what, today we're going to, yeah, you read the description. We're going to do an overview of the, the Master Bill 560 Gravity Series Charcoal Grill. Uh, we're going to dive into it a little bit differently. We're going uh, to show you some things that you may not be aware of that exist on this grill. Uh, we're going to do a burn-in today. I'm just probably going to cook some burgers after the burn-in is done. Uh, and you know what? We're going to talk a little bit more about this whole thing. Stay tuned. All right, so there, oh man, I tell you, that's a nice looking grill. It truly is. And there's a lot of surprising things with this. Uh, a lot of people are asking uh, how much, because I I did a video, if you want to see the uh, unboxing and assembly video, folks, uh, gets really deep into it. Uh, but if you're thinking about one of these, it's, a, it's really a good thing to watch, because it'll <laughs> show you some of the things that the uh, instruction manual doesn't show you. This thing's 500 bucks. The price of this thing since the day was uh, it was released has been at least where I live here in the Midwest uh, has been 500 bucks wherever I look Lowe's, Home Depot. I don't think Lowe's has it, but Home Depot does. Uh, a lot of the hardware stores that carry the Masterville products has been 500 bucks all day. I've been kind of waiting for the price to change, hopefully go down, but it hasn't. Uh, so this thing is 500 bucks. Um, this thing is really unique. Uh, you know, people are saying, well, nobody else makes a gravity smoker, and that's not true. Charcoal gravity smokers, there are some very high-end uh, charcoal gravity smokers, uh, but a lot of them don't have what this one has. It's got a fan on it, and it's got a controller on it. Uh, it's uh, supposedly a PID controller. I, I've, I've seen nowhere that tells me that it is, but everybody tells me it reacts like one. It's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff online if you want to talk about that too. There's actually a Facebook page, Master Built uh, Grill Owners, if you want to take a look at that. Um, let's take a look at a couple other things. All right, if you're asking where the charcoal goes, that's where the charcoal goes. And supposedly this holds about 16 pounds. And the uh, nice thing about it is you can put it in layers. What you're looking down there is that corrugated thing that's actually your burn grate. And a lot of people like to put uh, expanded metal on top of that because apparently the charcoal falls through there pretty easily. But today we're gonna to try it without it and see what happens. All right, so there's that grid again where the charcoal burns and uh, this goes in like that and you put like a fire starter in there to uh, get, get it going. This bucket down here, this is actually your ash bucket and it's, it's removable, made of metal. And uh, if, if you notice, there's these buttons all over the place. There's three of them on there. And these are little safety devices because when you're burning, you remember, your, your charcoal is in here, and your burn grate is right here. You got a fan that blows the heat and the smoke into the chamber, but your fire is it's right here. So the reason for these safety switches is if you have to, if you open up this door right here, or the, the top door right there, or even the grill door, it shuts off the fan. It's like a safety, because they don't want, if you lift that open, it would burn like crazy, and you know, you could have more of a fire, a bad fire, I would think. So let's uh, <laughs> let's keep on going. All right, let's stay on the outside of the grill. Now, grease management is something I've asked a lot of questions on with this thing, and uh, I, I think there may be an issue or two with that. Uh, they have a pull-out grease tray. It's right there. And the reason it's not pulling out all the way is that the grease, it's not a grease cup, there's a grease trough down there. We'll, we'll take a look at that. All right, so there's the grease tray, and that uh, pulls out just like that and uh, goes in. But I tell you what, let's take it out of the way and then take a look at the, at the back side also. All right, so it kind of reminds me a little bit of a Weber gas grill. They have something similar. It's not as big, uh, but it's really, there ain't much to it. It's pretty light duty. Uh, it does channel all the grease, and the nice thing about it, it's removable. Uh, you could definitely line that, and I probably will line mine with some aluminum foil, which will just make cleanup easier. Uh, I'm also contemplating that tray of maybe doing something different with it, but right now I think I'm just going to let it be and uh, let the grill tell me what it needs done. All right, there's your vent. That's where the smoke comes out. They've got a little internal baffle going on there, but uh, there's nothing really to stop the wind, the snow, or the rain from blowing in there. Uh, I could definitely see a little bit of a mod. Uh, I actually could cover this up and wouldn't it be cool to put, maybe put a stack like that? Maybe right 
here. Oh, that might look pretty cool. I don't know. You know, you're staring at it and I'm staring at it too. This thing right here. And um, I see it comes apart on the inside. Let's take a closer look at that. All right, I just took it apart and it's just, just a plug. It's an aluminum plug. And uh, there's been rumors that there's going that there is or there's going to be a rotisserie. So this would probably be where the rotisserie would put through there and it would mount out here. So, and then this is your pro port uh, right there. All right, so the basic design is this, this. I refer to this as a bread box design. It's like a bread box. It's kind of an oval uh, rectangular design. This door is really nice. Uh, very sturdy. The whole thing is uh, the whole thing is double wall construction, uh, all three sides, including the door, and and that I really like. Nice job. And if you're wondering what's below right here, I was looking for it before and I finally found it. That's where the temp probe is. So that's what's telling the controller what the temp is inside the grill, and they've got it nice and shielded here, so it doesn't get uh, when you're cl cleaning off your grill grates or something like that, so it doesn't get hurt, doesn't get hit. All right, so on the inside, you've got these cast iron grates, and you can see they say sear on one side and smoke on the other side. Apparently, that's what you're supposed to do. They have these two warming grates here, which are, you know, you can put them on two different levels, and you can combine them up on, on one level like this. Uh, it's, a, it's an odd size. I tried fitting uh, the grates from uh, my Pella Pro, my Cam Chef, my Weber. Uh, I tried fitting everything, and everything was just a little bit too shy when it came to, uh, to width and was too long. When it came, so there isn't any from any other grill that you could use, so that's 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 too bad. All right, so underneath the grates, you've got this stainless steel. They call it a heat manifold. So your your heat and your smoke come in from over there. There's a fan. The fan looks like a computer fan, that little square thing, and then it just comes in here and it distributes through these holes, and they're on this side and on the other side. Uh, this is angled or pitched to try and get the grease away and down to the uh, down to the grease tray down there. So it does have a way of handling grease. You've got that over there, which is angled, and it's trough, so it, it takes it off. But it, like with any other grill, folks, it's, it's all about maintenance. And uh, if you're not taking care of it and you're allowing grease to sit, you could easily have a grease fire. So I'll tell you what, let's keep on moving here. All right, so there's the controller. It's got four pro ports. It only comes with one. Uh, it's really simplistic in what it does. It just runs the fan. So if you want hotter temperature, it runs the fan longer. If you want it not as hot, it doesn't run the fan so hot. So you can turn it on, turn it off. You can control the temp. Uh, there's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth with this, and that's going to be a whole separate video. There's a timer with it, and you just turn the dial and press things, and, and it works. So I, I tell you what, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm, I'm, I'm getting antsy here. Let's, let's do the first burn-in. All right, so for charcoal, they say you can use anything. I've got some Kingsford long burning, but for, for this, I'm just going to use a Royal Kickery and put about a half a 16-pound bag in. All right, I put the whole 16 pounds in. I wanted to see if it would take a whole bag, and it does with a little left to spare, so that's good. All right, they, they say to use a fire starter like this, a tumbleweed, and they say that you're supposed to put it in like that. It fits tight, but when it goes in there, you end up losing quite a few of them, but... There, <laughs> it's it's in. Uh, okay, I I don't know how to improve on that. All right, fire star is in now. Before you start anything, you got two air intakes. So those are those gray things, and those are slides that you just you pull out. And now you're ready to go. Right before you let your fire starter, you got to open up the top and the bottom. The controller's plugged in, but I don't have it on. We're going to be setting it at 250. We're going to light this first, and then we're going to set that at 250. All right, let's try doing this. Turn on. I want to go to this button right here, which is the temp. Set it at 250. And then press the temp thing again. And that's your set temp right there. Okay. I don't need time. All right, the instructions say to wait a minute or two until you know that your fire starter is is uh, lit, which I'm pretty sure it is. And then it says to close, close your top and latch it. And then close your bottom and latch it. Let's see if I can do that here one-handed. And that turned on the fan. So now we're just going to watch 
and uh, see how long it takes to get to 250 degrees. All right, this is like five minutes and we're almost at 250. If you're wondering if this is a variable speed fan, it is. Because when we got the 230, she kicked down right away and knew she's getting closer to 250. So you can barely hear it running right now. We're just approaching 250. Uh, they say seven minutes for 225. We did it like 250. Now you can hear the fan and it's kind of cool. So we, we did that in like five for its first time. So that's pretty neat. I've got a little Oklahoma Joe's puck that I'm going to put on the inside just to monitor the temperatures and uh, verify uh, what we got, what, what that is, and what we got at grill level. Just a ton of smoke coming out of this thing at, you know, at that temp setting of 250. Really, really nice. Uh, they even put a hanger on the side for your shutoffs. That's kind of cool too. But this thing really needs is a front shelf. I think that'll be one of my first mods I'll do to this thing. Plus maybe some gasket material to that door. All right, folks, coming up on an hour here. This controller's been doing a great job. 250 is what it's set at, and then right around 250 is what it's been holding. Uh, I don't care for that, because I, I don't know what they're afraid of there. Let's take a look. I got two pucks on the inside, Oklahoma Joel ones, and uh, they are both um, this side right here, 250, and that's closer to the probe. The probe's right there. This side's closer to the to where the heat's coming from, so it's going to be a little hotter. So that tells me that this side's cooler, this side's hotter. That's okay. Everything is, uh, you can see, browning up real nice. we got about 10 more minutes, and we're going to bump it up to 400 for 30 minutes and, and complete the seasoning process, and then we're going to cook some burgers. All right, one hour at 250. I bet everybody wants to know what... Uh, how much uh, charcoal it burnt, I, I know I do. That'll shut the fan off. There's that switch up there. And a whole bunch of smoke and moisture up here. Holy smokes. Oh, uh, boy, it's barely down a couple inches. That's it. Ain't much. So we'll <laughs> cover this back up and uh, Get her going again. All right, guys, uh, 400, it overshot real quick. I mean, it went from 250 to 400 in like less than a minute. And it was 415, now it's bringing itself back down. A nice job. I really am impressed with this controller. Um, you can see where that is. <laughs> Let's take a look at the inside, see what our, our pucks are reading here. Our pucks are reading both a little shy of 400, uh, both coming up on 400. So nicely done there. Uh, there's a little smoke that comes out of the top here, which I think is normal. I've had a lot of people tell me that that's normal. So just in case you get one of these, apparently that's normal. Now I, I, I lifted it up, gave you a look. Temperature went down. Now the fans kicked in and she's bringing her back up to uh, 400, nice and fast. All right, folks, set it to 700 and you can see where it's at. It got up there in like a minute and a half. It overshot and then came back. And it's, uh, that's impressive how this thing works. Uh, I have not cooked on this yet, so there's a long ways to go. A lot of videos to do here yet. Uh, some nice mods coming up. Uh, keep on watching for that. That's a little tease. Hey, and you know what? If you want to see somebody else cooking on it, my son Brian Horseman, Mad Horse Barbecue. I'll, I'll leave the link down below, and you can take a look at uh, my, my son Brian. And he's got one of these. He's had it a week longer than I have, and he's done a lot of cooks on his. He does a great job. And as always, folks, you know what? Thumbs up, leave a comment. And as always, appreciate you watching. Thank you.